this is the one. This is the Trash My TBR where we trash my actual TBR. Happy Friday! Welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and this is Trash My TBR, round four. So Trash My TBR is a game I invented many, many years ago. The original aim of the game was to reduce the number of books on my virtual TBR. So books that I had marked on Goodreads as to read. I did this like five years ago, went through asking you guys to trash those books so that I could take them off my list, never have to think about them again. But since then, Trash My TBR has become a format that I've seen quite a lot of people doing on their own channels, doing their own versions of, and what they always do is trash their actual TBR, or get the viewers to trash their actual books and decide which ones they should unhaul. Which, to be honest, is probably a better version than mine anyway. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We are gonna go through my entire TBR trolley, asking you guys for negative comments only trash my tbr do not praise my tbr i already bought these books i already know why i thought they looked good i want you to trash them if you can't say something mean don't say nothing at all and here's the thing negative comments are great negative reviews are great the number of times i have picked up a book specifically because someone reviewed it really negatively but the things the bad things that they were saying about it were things that i like in books and so i bought that book anyway that happens all the time. And the same thing happens in Trash My TBR. My format generally has been going through 10 books at a time from my virtual TBR, getting you guys to trash them. And then based on your comments, I decide which ones to trash. Anything that I don't delete from my Goodreads TBR, I have to buy on that day. So it comes down to like, do I want it or do I not want it? Last time around we did this, I'll link to that video below. It was called Trash My TBR Round 3. You guys trashed all but three of the books that I presented to you. And to be honest, you trashed those ones too. These are the books I ended up buying, The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro, Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, and Almost Love by Louise O'Neill. All of these got trashed by you guys, but the negative comments were ones that I knew I don't mind those kind of things in books. So I bought them. That is the beauty of negative comments. I think most of these were described as boring, and I love boring books, so I bought them. So this video is going to have two parts to it. I will try and divide up the progress bar in that clever little way, so you can skip through if you are more interested in one section than the other. But section number one is going to be reviewing the results of the last round of Trash My TBR. So I've actually got footage of me reacting to your comments, making my decisions on which books to buy, and going through my thought process on why I bought these three, and then I'll tell you what I actually thought of them, whether they should have been trashed after all. And then section two is going to be the next round of Trash My TBR, which is actually my book trolley. So this video might end up being like three hours long, but I'll try and keep it snappy. So first things first, let's flash back in time and watch past Emma react to your comments. Oh, hello. It is Friday the 18th of September, which is hopefully not too far in the past for you, just a casual six months. Because if it's not, that means I've managed to stay on track and keep these Trash My TBR vids going quickly. So where I am in time, it is exactly a week since I posted my last Trash My TBR video, so I'm now going to go into the comments and see your thoughts on these books. So in that last video, I gave you 10 books from my TBR for you guys to trash and hopefully you would have done a great job. I've seen a lot of comments coming in and so far it looks like you guys have been doing great. Hopefully we're going to be able to trash a bunch of these books from my TBR so that I don't have to spend my hard-earned money. Okay so let's go in order through the list. We're going to start with Almost Love by Louise O'Neill. Okay this top comment here is praising it. Kit naming and shaming you. What did I say? Negative comments only. I'm ignoring that comment. The next one is better. I really didn't like Almost Love. I found the blurb to be very misleading. Quite a few people saying that the characters are really unlikable, which is never really a problem for me. I don't mind unlikable characters. A lot of people have said here that they also don't mind unlikable characters, but they found these ones too unlikable, which is interesting. But even so, I just feel like the worse a character is, the more I tend to like the book. So that doesn't really bother me. Ruth said it was a bit dull, so that's a shame. Twisting Your Side says, I love an unlikable female character, but they have to be unlikable in an interesting way. This one wasn't at all. The plot, character work, the pacing, all awful. <laughs> Hated the main character. Okay, I've gone through all of them. Literally every single negative comment there was about the main character being unlikable. 
and that is really really useful because part of why I do these videos is I want you guys to be like as negative as possible and then I will then base my decisions on that and in this case if all of the negatives are about the character being unlikable that's really interesting because to me that's not a problem so for me I'm still gonna buy this book I'm opening up the hive page right now because the rule that I set myself for this is it's like a here and now decision I trash it or I stash it <laughs> I have to buy it straight away or remove it from my TBR so I'm gonna buy it okay the next book on the list was A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute the top comment here says it includes a lot of casual racism which didn't sit comfortably with me yeah that's definitely not something I like Molly said it's dull and repetitive and the love interest was vile and misogynist these are definitely not things that I like I have heard so many good things about this book from people in my real life who have loved it um, none of them mentioned anything about casual racism in it which is interesting is it that it's a book that includes racism because it's representing the racism that happens in which case that is you know it's still not pleasant to read about but is very different from the book being racist I'm getting mixed answers on that which is interesting so I think I need to do more research. I know I literally just said that my rule has to be to decide here and now, but I don't feel comfortable buying this book straight away if it is a book that includes casual racism, like reflecting the views of the author, I definitely would not want to support that. If it's actually just that it's a book that includes and addresses racism that is different, but I would need to do proper research on here and I'm only finding reviews so far from white authors so I, I just need to like properly when I'm not on camera like sit down and look up some own voices reviews so I'm making an exception to my rule for this one I am going to let's just I mean for the purposes of this I'm gonna trash it okay I'm gonna trash it and then I will look into it as a later date as if it's a classic that is worth revisiting for me or not so that one is trashed moving on to the remains of the day <laughs> this top comment here literally just says remains of the day and then has three like sick face emojis <laughs> was so boring painfully slow unnecessarily long slow is one comment <laughs> a lot of people saying that it's boring and slow and tedious here's the thing slow and boring and tedious doesn't necessarily put me off like if i find it slow and boring and tedious then obviously that's not fun but a lot of books that people say are slow and boring and tedious i love that kind of thing i love like a slow moving character driven novel where like literally fuck all happens that's kind of my favorite there is no real plot not a problem for me total snooze vest someone who admitted that they loved it said if you're not into slow moving character focused open-ended books you're not gonna like it but I am into slow moving character focused open ended books. Okay, here's an interesting comment. This one says, I found The Remains of the Day excessively dull and plotless, which was interesting to me because I usually like character focused books and don't need a strong plot to get through. So that's someone who likes the same kind of books as me, but still found this one excessively dull. Nancy V says it's the only book she's ever DNF'd in her life. Ugh, I don't know what to do. I have a feeling that if I buy it, I will end up DNFing it because I will get bored. I don't want to waste my money on it just to DNF it, but at the same time I don't want to miss out on what seems like it could be this really deep, beautiful reading experience that's going to stick with me throughout my life. <sighs> I'm going to add this one to my basket for now, but we'll come back to it. Okay, next is The Wallow Experiment. Again, lots of people saying that it's boring. Premise is fascinating, wanted to love it, but it was boring. Loads of people ended up DNFing it. Super slow. Like so many people saying that it's a really good premise with a really bad execution, which is interesting because I picked it obviously based on the premise, but apparently it's just like not following through. Boring with gross descriptions in it. I don't like gross descriptions. Not a thriller in any way. It's incredibly slow and really quite boring. Not worth your time. Okay, you know what? I believe you all trashing it. Next we have Burn Our Bodies Down. So this is by the same author as Wilder Girls. Okay, super disappointing, says Lauren B, especially the pacing. Kimberly enjoyed the first three quarters, but the ending was kind of trash. It was unrealistic and a bit dumb, in her opinion, okay? It was hollow. The ending wasn't worth trudging through the book. That's really annoying. Denise said that she's not giving spoilers, but it did something that really annoys her in books. But it does have a really interesting weird twist. I do love weird twists. 
Megan said that she's seen loads of people who were excited for this book be disappointed, which I've also seen to a list. Um, Books and Lala was disappointed in this one. Disappointing follow-up to Wilder Girls, says Jessica. A waste of reading time I can't get back, says Jillian. Lots of people saying boring. That's funny. I did not predict it being boring, because Wilder Girls was like anything but boring. Lots of people didn't like the ending of Wilder Girls, though, and I did like the ending of Wilder Girls. So all the people here saying they didn't like the ending of Burn Our Bodies Down, I might disagree with them too. But people saying it's like so deeply disappointing, even people who loved Wilder Girls were saying that. So I think that's pretty clear for me. Trash. Next is Dig by A.S. King. Comments here saying, preachy and overwritten. Characters are cloying. Twists were underwhelming or unnecessary. Celine says, Dig is a novel that talks about racism from the point of view of a white author with an all white cast. That sounds annoying. <laughs> I just scrolled down and literally I had already replied to that comment saying, oh, that sounds annoying. <laughs> Well, I still feel the same. This was one that was already on the fence, about to be honest. I put it on the list because Books and Lala loves it so much, but she does read more YA than I do. I just don't think I'm interested, especially if people are saying it's like cloying and annoying. I don't want to be cloyed and annoyed. So trash it. All the Missing Girls. This one got a lot of comments of people hating it. Jack says it was one of the most boring slogs I've ever read and the gimmick fell flat on its face. So the gimmick seems to be that it's written backwards, like it's told in reverse, which is interesting, but I've read other books that do that. Jess says that was its big selling point, but that it was annoying, repetitive, and required a suspension of disbelief that she couldn't give it. Also, I like this complaint. The title and synopsis make it sound like there are all these girls gone missing, but it's literally only two. <laughs> that is not enough missing girls for Jess. Lauren B says it was forgettable, she didn't like it. The idea was great, but the execution didn't do it justice. Elise says it was so boring, the kind of boring that makes you angry <laughs> because you feel like it's wasting your time. I bet if you bought it, you'd just DNF anyway to save yourself the hassle. That is fair. This was a thriller that was really big a few years ago, but I feel like a lot of those mega popular thrillers I now find really samey because I've read so many thrillers that it has to be something like brand new for me to now find it properly interesting. And lots of people here are saying it's like a book that you won't remember in two days. So it'd probably be something that I would like enjoy while I was reading it, but not actually care about afterwards, and I can't be bothered with that. Okami says, when the final reveal came around, I could not recall who the character was or why they were important. That is definitely something I've experienced in books before, and it's so annoying. <laughs> I love this from Emily. She says, so my mom, who isn't a big reader, did not like all the missing girls. Homegirl reads like 10 books a year and was still able to guess the ending. <laughs> Forgettable, forgettable, meh, overhyped. Even some people who are saying that they enjoyed it at the time are now saying they can't remember anything about it. So that's good to know. Trash it. Okay, then we have six stories. Morgan says, terrible writing and I guessed the killer early on. I don't think you will like this book or its writing. Do not waste your money, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Adeline tried reading it twice, once in audio, once in print and still couldn't get past the first 10% because it was confusing and dry. Confusing I kind of like sometimes. Quite a few people saying they enjoyed it but that the ending was cliche and that overall it was forgettable. So I'm okay with forgetting that one. Trash it. Then we have My Grandmother Asked Me To Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Backman. This I watched a lot of the comments come in. There were a lot of negative comments about this one as well. Jack said the main character is insufferable, the plot is bland and meandering and none of the characters behaved like real people. It's also quirky TM. Yeah, that does sound irritating. Lauren B says it's actually really sweet, but I don't know that I like sweet. And also, Lauren, you're not supposed to be saying nice things. She did good trashing other books, so I won't shout at her. <laughs> a lot of people pointed out that it has a child's point of view as the focus point, which I hadn't realised, and I often don't enjoy that. Quite a few people saying they love Frederick Backman, but this is their least favourite of his books. And if you're not into precocious children perspectives, which I am not, I hate precocious children. It's such a trope. I was talking to my sister about this the other day too. It's such a trope in TV shows to have like the precocious child who you're supposed to just like go nuts for. And I always hate them. Nicole said it's forgettable. I literally couldn't tell you what happens in this one. I'm sure Backman gave me feelings at some point. I think there was a dog. I do like dogs. Also that there's like fairy tales within the story, which again is something I'm not especially interested in. It can be done amazingly, but like that doesn't grip me hearing that. Like a lot of the story within a story is this make-believe land that the main kid's grandmother made up. 
So I was just like meh about that. This comment here I think was trying to get me to buy the book because they said you should only trash the Frederick Batman book if you don't enjoy wholesome heart-wrenching stories that make you feel way too much. But I kind of don't enjoy wholesome heart-wrenching stories that make you feel way too much. I find them annoying if they're like overly emotional. Yeah, I'm now uninterested in that so trash it! And finally, the last one is Pachinko. So this one, I actually said in the last video that you guys had your work cut out for you because I have wanted to read this one for years, so it would take a lot to make me trash it. And it got so many bad comments. I saw them coming in, I haven't read through them all yet, but that was a surprise to me. A lot of people said they DNF'd it and that it bored them. Some people said the first section set in Korea was really good, but then it just went downhill. A few people saying they didn't connect with the characters. Connecting with characters is very important to me. Like, I don't mind if the characters are really unlikable, I just have to find them interesting in some way. And a lot of people just said they weren't interested in the characters at all. This one from Lainey says, I hated Pachinko, I thought it was long and tedious with no payoff. And this is coming from someone who has read The Goldfinch three times. <laughs> I haven't read The Goldfinch. <laughs> it feels vaguely like a textbook, apparently. I would honestly rather read non-fiction about the same subject. What's the point of fiction if you don't add intrigue, emotional depth, or rich characters? It's a fair point. Quite a few people talking about like how much they learnt about the historical context from it, but that they found it boring and felt removed from the characters. So that does like leave me really unsure because I feel like I should know more. You know, I, I want to learn more about the Japanese occupation of Korea. This feels like something I should educate myself on more. Um, but maybe are there like better books that I could read that have more character development in it that I might enjoy more because there's no point trying to learn it through reading a book I don't enjoy and then don't engage with. But at the same point I am conscious of, I'm not like criticising any of the people leaving comments because I asked for this, but I'm conscious that it seems like from the people who have profile pictures, not everyone does, a lot of these are white people saying they found it boring and I don't want to just go along with that as another white person being like, oh, okay, well, that, that sounds boring then, um, rather than, like, pushing myself out of my comfort zone to learn about a different culture and a different part of history that I wasn't taught at school. This one person literally says they need, like, book therapy, <laughs> that Pachinko impacted them as a reader in the long run um, because they didn't DNF the book and then suffered a major reading slump that lasted for months and they're still recovering from very dramatic. One person said that it's an extended rant about racism, but that's not a negative to me. This one's tricky because it actually did get the most comments trashing it of anything, but I'm worried that those reasons aren't reasons that I should take as, a, as an excuse to not read a book. It has amazing reviews on Goodreads, and I do like like sweeping stories that follow through generations, and I don't read them that often. <sighs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna buy it. Thank you so much for trashing it. You guys did an amazing job of trashing this book. Um, but based on the specific comments it received, I've decided I'm still gonna buy it right now. So that is the end of my list, which means that is only three books I still have in my basket. The Remains of the Day, Almost Love, and Pachinko. And so because it's only three, I am gonna get the remains of the day. That was the one I was like wavering on but three books is a fine amount to buy right now so you guys are great you guys trashed seven books from my list and now i'm going to read the final three and even if i don't like them i can't even blame you guys because you guys did a great job of trashing those two i'm just defying you okay all three of those books added to my basket they are coming my way and i will catch up with you at the end of reading each one see you soon okay that was very interesting the first thing to point out is that I completely forgot that Burn Our Bodies Down was on that list and got trashed and I trashed it already. I forgot that and I bought it. It's now on this TBR trolley and I guess I'm giving you guys another chance to trash it and see if I actually listened this time. Everything else that you guys trashed sounds like it was the right decision for me, um, but I'm really glad that I bought these two. Pachinko, I gave five stars to. The Remains of the Day, I gave four stars to, but probably would be a five if I like studied it. I felt like it was too clever for me, but I loved it. Both of them were exactly what you guys said, but I love books that are slow, character driven, have very little plot, are just a lot of self-reflection. Can't get enough of it. 
I think the only instance where I should have listened to you guys is on Almost Love. I would liked this book fine, but I would have been happy to have trashed it, I wouldn't really have missed out on much. You guys warned me that there were unlikable characters, and as I said, I love unlikable characters, but I see what you mean. The main character in this was not someone I could warm to in any way. It's really hard to put my finger on what it is that I do and don't like about unlikable characters though, because for example, The Remains of the Day also has a very strange, inaccessible, emotionally stunted main character who makes decisions that I find incredibly frustrating, just like this one, but this book I loved and this book I thought was fine. So do I know anything about my reading taste? Does this exercise have a point? Are we learning anything? So with that very unhelpful guidance in mind, let us move to stage two of this video, Trash My TBR Trolley. I have like 40 something books on here. So we're gonna do a quick fire round. Get your typing fingers ready and remember negative comments only about all of these. Shaggy Bane, the Booker Prize winner, apparently very sad. Is it too sad? I did like A Little Life, if that helps. Sex Robots and Vegan Meat by Jenny Kleeman, basically just bought it for the title. I don't really read non-fiction. Mountain Road Late at Night, I know very little about this one. From the Wreck by Jane Rawson, I don't like sci-fi, but Simon Savage said this one is worth it. Always and Forever, Lara Jean by Jenny Han, I really enjoyed the first two. Marlena by Judy Bunton, about a teenage friendship gone wrong, is it cliche, does it do something different? Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, funny enough, since buying this one, I've heard a lot of comments from you guys saying that you didn't like it, why? Mr. Loverman by Bernardine Evaristo, I loved Girl Woman Other, I've heard this one's even better. The Hole by Hiroko Oyamada, it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling, apparently strange, is it strange in a good way? Tell Me Your Secret by Dorothy Clumsen, seems like a pretty run-of-the-mill thriller, is it worth it? Will I like it? Night Shift by Kiara Ladner, a story of female obsession. The End of Men by Christina Sweeney Baird. It's about a virus that wipes out the male population. Is it too good to be true? Plain Song by Kent Haruf. Eagle-eyed viewers among you will spot that I did unhaul this one at the end of my last Balancing the Books, but so many of you commented saying how good it was that I swapped it back. I kept this one and I unhauled Shopaholic instead. Excuse me, I'm talking. Cars are so loud. Uh, so was that the right decision? Rilla of Ingleside by Ellen Montgomery. I had a very up and down relationship with the Anne of Green Gables books. Some of them I adored, some of them I thought were mega boring. Which way does this fall? Can You See Me Now by Trisha Saklecha, a thriller about a woman in the Indian government. The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov, a cult classic that I just keep putting off. Oreo by Fran Ross, a book that I've heard so much praise for, but also think I might just not be clever enough to read. Pine by Francine Toon. I bought this one because a bookseller recommended it to me, but then my sister said it was crap. Girl in Snow by Dania Kakafka, uh, a crime novel set in the snow. Don't really know anything beyond that. Patsy by Nicole Dennisben. I got this one from a recommendation from Jesse from Bowties and Books in their video about queer books by authors of colour, or queer books by black authors, I think was the video. Talking to Women by Nell Dunn. Lena actually gave this one to me and I really need to get around to reading it. Unless you think I shouldn't. Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism by Christine R. Godsey, another non-fiction book that I bought solely because I liked the title. Hummingbird by Tristan Hughes. I got this one recommended when I did the Mr. B's book cafe, book spa recommendation. Sadly, I haven't actually loved any of the books that I got from that experience, but I only had like a little mini taster of it. I didn't do the full book spa experience, which I imagine gets you very, very good recommendations. This is my last one that's left. Will it be the standout exception. Little Sons by Zeig Zunda, which is historical fiction set in 1903, and it's the story surrounding the death of Magistrate Hope, so not a period of history that I know anything about. Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power, which you guys already trashed and I forgot. I really liked Wilder Girls though. Big Lies in a Small Town by Diane Chamberlain. The title is basically a description of my favourite genre. Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. It's about a woman in Iceland on death row, and also the Good People by Hannah Kent, about a woman, it's based on a true story of a woman who was accused of abusing her grandson, but she claims that he was actually a changeling, not her real grandson. And finally, The Dead Girls by Jorge Ibargüen Goitia. This one sounds so dark. It's apparently a dark comedy, but about, based on a real story of two serial killing sisters who owned a brothel and were murdering the girls that worked there. Sounds like horrific, but apparently it's funny, confusing. My neck hurts from being at that angle. So there you go, trash my TBR, no holds barred, don't hold back. I want negative comments only and plenty of them. That's really all I have to say. Enjoy your life.